Hey everyone, welcome to Amazing Facts Youth tonight. Um, we are going to have a great program, so we'll go ahead and get it started with a word of opening prayer. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come together and to hear your word tonight. I pray that you would bless our speaker tonight, and I pray that you would speak through him. Um, I pray that you bless all of us um, as we are in different um, stages of the Sabbath across the world, and so I pray that you would just bless us and allow us to draw closer to you during this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Our special music for this evening is brought to us by um, Andrew and Annie is on the piano, um, and this is their church choir. Um, it's entitled, How Can I Keep From Singing?
Amen. Thank you, Andrew and Annie and your church for providing music for us. It was beautiful. Um, uh, we'll now transition into our message for tonight, which is brought to us by Vic Mills. Um, he's spoken for us before, and I've enjoyed his messages. So I know we'll have a great message tonight. So whenever you're ready, look forward to be blessed. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you guys for inviting me again. Uh, it's been it's been a like we say in New York. It's been a minute since I've been joining the uh, the Granite Bay Youth um, live stream. So I'm definitely excited to be here, um, especially when I they uh, Tony contacted me and said the theme was Daniel. Then I got even more hyped because honestly, um, I love the books of Daniel Revelation. When uh, I grew up in a household where um, this this book was my dad gave Bible studies with Daniel Revelation. And um, but it wasn't until like maybe three or four years ago. Um, I think it's no, it's five, five years ago where I'm like, you know what? I should study this for myself. And when I did, I, I, I was like blown away uh, because many times it's misrepresented. Even in Adventist circles, like this is too hard for you to understand. The prophecies are too deep. You need to go to like 20 million classes, start five small groups to get like what's even going on. But it's really not even that. Um, it's really not even that hard. We live in a society where I don't even know what's in high school anymore. You're learning Shakespeare. You're learning so many of these mathematical equations, philosophical ideas, and you guys are like passing, getting good grades. And when it comes to Daniel, Daniel, it's like, man, this is hard. But hopefully by God's grace this evening, uh, I want to encourage everybody to study the books of Daniel Revelation. And so when I heard the theme, I was like, you know, put me on the list. I love Daniel um, it's in, in Revelation. And by God's grace, uh, we can be blessed by tonight. Again, just introduction. Maybe some who don't know me. My name is Victor Mills. I live in New York. Um, I'm an elder at the Middletown Seventh-day Adventist Church. I love studying the word. I'm passionate about it. I'm on my phone because my computer was having problems. I don't know what's going on, but I'm on my phone. So if you know, I look man, I look random because it's blurred out, but you know, just have grace on me, guys. I know all my Gen Zs will I don't have my little headset, my microphone to talk to you guys like I'm on TikTok, but um hopefully. You guys will be blessed, and I want interaction. I mean, I see the chat. If if you guys are, um, let me know where everyone's listening from. Uh, I love to know where everybody's from. Last time there was like people from Poland, Ecuador, and you know all over the world. I just want to say happy Sabbath from New York. Let me know where you're listening from, and I just wanted to ask. Maybe someone can inform me in the chat. Where are you guys at? Um. It doesn't seem it doesn't seem fitting to have pastors speaking with headsets. I know it's weird, um, but people do it like I'm not about that, like phone call, you know, that little headset thing with the microphone. I look really weird. Uh, so, yeah, we're here tonight and I'm from New York again. So I just want to wish everybody happy Sabbath and let me know where have you guys studied Daniel. I mean, where did you guys end up? I don't know where like what chapters have you studied thus far, because I'm kind of. Um, I don't want to go over something that somebody already did, but let me know in the pat in the chat what you guys have studied. This would be a good quiz for you guys, you know, just see if you guys were paying attention and not like have your screen off on Instagram or somewhere else. But let me know, please, uh, where you guys have have made it in the book of Daniel or what stories you went over, because then I don't have to go and, um, you know do another presentation on what you, on, on something you guys may have or may have not heard. So let me know. But um, because I was low, like, honestly, I was going to do a whole like summary of Daniel, like every book. And let's see, how long are these supposed to be? Maybe an hour, 30 minutes, um, 45 minutes. But I was going to go through the whole book of Daniel. So if everybody's down to like, yo, Vic, I, I, I don't know, Daniel, I really haven't studied. Could you give me a, a, um, I don't even know what you guys study. I don't even know how you guys get your notes now in school, but like, give me a good summary of Daniel. If you guys want that, let me know in the chat. Cause 
you know, hands up, thumbs up. If you want a summary, amazing facts, you says that sounds good. Okay. Yeah. You guys want a summary of Daniel. Okay. So I mean, this is 12 chapters. We're going to try to condense it into, I want, uh, let's see. Uh, we'll try to end it an hour or less. I'm trying to going to do it. I'm going to try to do it in less, but this is your crash course in the book of Daniel. And then after, if you guys got any questions, listen, I'm not a scholar. I didn't, I did go to Andrews, but I'm not a theology major. Oh, just a little bit about me. I study graphic design. Um, I'm a uh, designer special, uh, specializing in brand identity. I also uh, run a little lawn care side hustle, uh, which is awesome. So I get to work on the computer. I get to work outside. It's been a blessing. So I'm kind of tanned because I'm literally outside. You know how people say, young people, we're outside. I'm literally outside working every day. Um, and so... Uh, so yeah, that's a little bit more about me. So let's get into our study tonight. Um, Daniel's an amazing book. I want to read a quote. Uh, Ellen White says this. Oh, but let me pray before we start. But Heavenly Father, thank you for um, the books of Daniel Revelation, Lord. Honestly, they they are transformative books. We are living in a time, serious times. We're living in the judgment. And we need young people. We need a movement. We need your people to um, have a have a revival of the study, studying the books of Daniel Revelation. So by God's grace, Lord, help me to present your word um, in a clear, simple way so that we can all understand. Forgive me of my sins. Fill me with your spirit and uh, lead and guide us into all truth. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. OK, so let's get into this. Daniel chapter one. Many people love to just stay on Daniel chapter one and not go anywhere else. We could do that, but we're going to summarize. So literally 605 BC, we have Jehoiakim, king of Judah, being taken captive by King Nebuchadnezzar. Now, this is crazy because this was prophesied years before in advance. If you study in the books of Isaiah, because, because, um, Hezekiah messed up and was like, man, all this gold and all this silver is mine. He literally showed all his money and treasures to the Babylonians. Instead of giving honor and glory to God, he was actually given a punishment where your king, your sons will become eunuchs in the kingdom of Babylon. And so literally Daniel is, is a, is kind of like a, uh, um, basically a consequence of Hezekiah's lack of faithfulness to God. And so we see now a whole bunch of ratchet, wretched kings in Judah, especially Jehoiakim. I mean, this guy literally threw Jeremiah's prophecies in, in the fire. He cut them up with a, a, an ink pen is what we see in, in Jeremiah. And now literally it's over. Jehoiakim, king of Judah, the city of peace, is now being conquered by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and and he is this king of confusion. I mean, if you never, if you met, listen, if you never, ne Nebuchadnezzar is like a combination of Donald Trump, Kanye West, and one of the craziest people you ever know, all in one, all in one, and so. But he's a mastermind. He's brilliant. He's a general. And it says in verse two, the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into the, his hand with a part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried to the land of Shinar, to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels to the into the treasure house of his God. I'm reading from the King James Version. Um, so here we see that the Lord did it. It's funny that Daniel's life He's 15 years old. He's uprooted from his family, friends, um, society. Uh, he's His manhood is literally taken away. We know that he became a eunuch. He was under the, the, the you know, watch care of the master of eunuchs, as we're going to see later on in the chapter. But this guy stayed faithful to God despite new new environment. New education, new name, new food, new everything. Daniel stayed faithful to God, and it the, it was the Lord who did it. And I think many times, young people, we try we try to figure out like, God, why am I in this situation? Why is Babylon? Why is confusion? Why are trials, tribulations, things that seem to be going wrong, like all over my life? You know, and. Sometimes God gives us 
into situations because of our disobedience. Like we may be Adventists, but like we have struggles too. And when we decide to do our own way, God's like, man, I can't force you to love me. So at times he gives us into situations that are not comfortable, that are not uh, uh, what the ideal of his plan. But in that, God still has his people who stay faithful to him. Now, there's a whole bunch of young men of the king's seed here, but it's only four men, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, that stay faithful to God. Now, check this out. I don't know if you guys ever studied, but their names mean something. Daniel's name means God is my judge. Hananiah's name means God is gracious. Mishael's name means I belong to God. Azariah's name means God is my helper. And so this is a message for us today in the names of Daniel and his three friends. It says, God is my judge. He is gracious to me. I belong to him and he helps me. Wow. What a bar. Check that out in their names is a message for you young people this morning and for myself. And the name is associated with their character. And what more would this deviant king, Nebuchadnezzar, try to do but change their name? And he tries to do that. Belshazzar's name is turned from God is my judge to Bel protects the king. Shadrach's name means literally Aku, the god of the moon, commands. Meshach's names mean I am like Aku, the moon god. And Abednego's name means servant to Aku, the moon god. I mean, listen, these names were so beautiful, dedicated to God. And Nebuchadnezzar says, I want to not only change your literal name, I want to change your character. And the first thing he does, young people, you already know, he pulls out the, the beverage. He pulls out the meat. He pulls out everything. He says, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat. Modern Babylon today tries to do the same thing. I mean. There's a reason, young people, why, I mean, if you don't know the reason, many times we grow up in the church and it's like, why are we eating veggie meat? Why is everybody plant-based? Like, why is this tofu everywhere? Like, what's up with this cashew cheese? Like, dude, but I want to tell you guys something. The world is already on this. Listen, 20, 30, 30, I just turned 35 today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 35 is the new 25. I mean, you look at athletes like Novak Djokovic. This guy's a superstar in tennis. He's 36, beating 20-year-olds. I mean, the guy is plant-based, gluten-free, vegan. He takes his life ser seriously. But what do we do as Adventists? Man, we're on Taco Bell runs. We're on Chipotle runs. We want, the, we want you know, we're, we're everywhere eating Skittles. We got Jolly Ranch. We got so much uh, 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 unhealthy foods. And I listen, I love Oreos, too. But I mean, I could eat a whole pack, but by God's grace, you know, he, he helps me. I'm, I'm trying to be like Daniel out here, but listen, we have so much a uh, blessing in our health message. Yeah. Especially with young people. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. I got happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yes. My uncle birthday today. Praise the Lord. Thank you, everybody. I'm blessed. Listen, it's only God's grace that I am. I'm here today, man. It, it's, it's only God's grace. But as I was saying, the world has our health message, young people. Like, they, you know, it, it's a vibe to be plant-based. And people are like, yeah, I don't eat meat, animal cruelty. But literally, God's word has been advocating this for thousands of years. And, you know, that should be a trend you hop on. Hashtag plant-based life. Um, but Daniel purpose in, purposes in his heart to not defile himself. There's a direct correlation between what you eat and how you understand God and his word. And Daniel knew that. So he goes on the Daniel plan. Everybody knows fruits, vegetables, grains, nuts, pulse, which the Bible says, which literally means lagoons. Um, he goes plant-based for 10 days. And, and growing up when I was in high school, no one could believe I was plant-based. I mean, I'm 6'2", I'm 200-something pounds. I play bass. I play all these different sports. Everybody's like, where's your protein? And why are you not skinny? But Daniel, it says after 10 days in verse 15, at the end of the 10 days, their countenances appear fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. I mean, I want to encourage young people, start eating living food, not dead food. Um, and ultimately, the goal is this. 
it's not about diet. So let's let let me let me give some disclaimers here. Uh, we're not saved by what we eat. Are we all clear? Can I see any some hands in the chat? Eating plant based does not save us. Correct, everybody. Yes, praise the Lord. That doesn't mean go get. That doesn't mean go go get go get you know eat all whatever you want to eat. But we're not saved by that. But because we're saved, young people, now we know that this is not our temple. This is God's temple. This is God's body. And many of us, you know, are trying to be Ferraris, high-end BMWs, and we put an 87 gas into our systems and expecting to ride, ride and drive smoothly. But if we put the right nutrition combined with the spirit of God, the result is this. Check it out. Verse 17. As for the four children, God gave them knowledge, skill and wisdom and learning. And Daniel had understanding and visions and dreams. And notice what it says in verse 20. In all matters of wisdom and understanding, the king inquired of, the, of them. He found them, these four Hebrew boys, out of all the rest of them, 10 times better. Who wants to be 10 times better? I want to be 10 times better, man. I mean, honestly, it's crazy. Check this out, young people. Listen, and I'm from New York, so if I sound a certain way, please be gracious unto me. Young people, seriously, I, when I'm with young people, we need to keep it real. We want to excel in school. Can I get a thumbs up? We want to excel in our in our workplace. Can I get a thumbs up? We want to excel in everything but spirituality. Have mercy. Dude, we're getting A's on things that have nothing to do with God. We're we're we are like you know, just magnificent and excellence in all things but the Bible. And God is saying, I need people who are excellent in my word. And because you're studying my word, therefore, you will be excellent in everything else. See, we have it backwards because society pushes what? I got to get the job. Then I got to get the kid, the boyfriend. Then I got to get married. Then I got boom, boom, boom. Your life is all set up, right? And listen, who knows if you want to start a business that's looked down upon because it's like, man, you're an entrepreneur. Like, what are you doing? You know, we ha we think we have everything set up with a plan from the world. But God is telling you this, guys, you put me first. Everything else comes into place. Mom is an entrepreneur. Praise the Lord. Shark Tank is my favorite show. Low key. Like, that's the only show I watch if I'm watching TV. Just kidding. Um, but young people. This is Daniel. And Daniel's name means this. God is my judge. So throughout the book of Daniel, you're going to catch this theme about judgment. I mean, God is my judge. And listen, we're a people judged in Revelation chapter three, the Laodicean church. You know what Laodicea means? Literally means a people judged. So a people judge should be studying the book called God is my judge. That's why we're studying it. It's crazy. Listen, you thought you thought there were, weren't going to be bars tonight. There are going to be bars. Listen, we're, we're, we're going to make so many connections through the power of the Holy Spirit. You're going to want to study Daniel every single day. It's not going to just be Friday nights. So let's be 10 times better. Let's dedicate our lives to God. And um, by God's grace, we'll be 10 times better students, brothers, sisters, youth in our church, if you're married, you'll be 10 times better husband or wife, 10 times better homes. And check this out. This message that God gives us young people is not like a five-year goal. Dude, this is longevity. Look at 21. You know why Daniel added that? That's like a low-key flex. And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. Bro, Daniel goes to like his 90s. Daniel is faithful into his 90s. I think I heard one of your live streams a, a guy gave about Daniel chapter 6. You know Daniel chapter 6, he's an old man. And people are still hating on Daniel. This dude is in his 80s and 90s, and they still want to kill him. This message that we have, young people, the Adventist message, the three angels message, it's a longevity message. I mean, don't you hear it on, on, on social media and in culture? It's all about legacy. Dude, you will have literally no legacy without God. Just act Solomon. Next, Daniel chapter two. We're moving slowly but surely. Young Daniel is given a, a test. And it's, and it's a ridiculous request. He, the king has a dream given by God. Ellen White says, oh, and if you want some insight, study patriot, prophets and kings. Ellen White goes in on all these chapters 
uh, one to six. Um, this guy has a king. He this guy has a dream. Excuse me, Nebuchadnezzar. Remember our Donald Trump, Kanye West uh, combination, and all you know all these weird people that we see that are obnoxious, but like want to do what's right, but don't want to do what's right. I mean, this is Nebuchadnezzar, guys. He's crazy. Um, he says, "Tell me the dream." Right? I I had a dream and I can't remember it. But I need somebody to tell me the dream that I can't remember. And then when you tell me the dream that I can't remember, interpret it for me. Bro, what? Even his, even his, even his own wise men are like, you know, King Nebuchadnezzar, like nobody, not even the gods can like only, only the gods, no man. And verse 10 says, there is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore, there is no king or Lord, Lord, nor ruler that acts such things at any magician or astrologers or Chaldean. It is rare, a rare thing that the king requireth, and there is none other that can show it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. What are you asking? Who can tell you a dream you can't remember and then interpret the dream you can't remember? Nobody can do that but the divine. Everybody knows the story, especially Granite Bay youth. You got to know the story, man. Daniel and Daniel gets the vision, not because he's a smart guy. Again, we learned in Daniel chapter one that he relied on God. And what did he do? He didn't go to TikTok to let me see. Let me let me let me see. All right. How to interpret magician dreams. And, uh, you know, no, he didn't go to TikTok. He didn't check the late, latest um, um, spiritualistic. Also, a zodiac sign like, is this is this uh, the Virgo season? No, he didn't do any of that. He said he went to his friends. And he sought God in prayer. Verse 16, Daniel went in and desired of the I mean, verse uh, 17. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah, his companions, that they would dwell, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Here's some key things, young people. Um, you notice Daniel never has uh, uh, any new friends. Bro, he has three friends. And all those friends lead him to God. So, listen, I don't know how many friends you have. But if the in a crisis, if the first thing they don't tell you is, hey, let's pray. Hey, let's fast. Hey, let's open up God's word. If they don't tell you that, I think you got to, you know, kind of condense your circle. Try to find some Hananiah, Michels, and Azariahs, because honestly, as young people, friends play a big part. They influence the way you talk, eat, dress. Everybody wants to be a vibe. Let's just be real. Everyone wants to low-key flex. Everybody wants to be an influencer. But listen, if we're not influenced by the spirit of God, I don't know. You got to question the spirit, young people. So Daniel prays. That's the first thing. He desires mercies. He doesn't come to God like, hey, God, you know, I'm faithful to you. Come on, give me the vision. No, it's God have mercy on me. Have mercy on my friends. Have mercy on the heathen wise men. Because notice, check this out, guys. If it was me, you, 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 you took me from my home. You killed my family. You ransacked and desolated Jerusalem and Mount Zion and all the wonderful uh, uh, Jewish heritage. Dude, forget you wise men. You guys are heathens. You guys worship all these fake gods. I would have said, let them die and save us. Daniel says, no, I'm praying for them too. So what's the key thing there? Pray for your enemies. Look at this. Daniel gets the vision. Daniel receives it. He blesses God and he gives one of the the beautiful is verses in the Bible. It says, verse 20, God answered and, and, and said, bless, Daniel answered and said, blessed be the God, uh, blessed be the name of God forever and ever for wisdom and might are his. And he changes the times and seasons as we are in New York, just literally ending summer, going into fall. Literally, do you know the seasons change because God does it? Just as the seasons in your life change, man, you may have a new beginning. You may be starting a new chapter in life, new school, new job, new relationship, new situation. God is in control and he removes kings and sets 
then setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom to the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. You thought Trump got into office just because he just got in there because everybody voted? No. You thought, you know, Biden is just out here in the streets because this is just what he does. I mean, God literally has set up kings and take down kings. He's in control of the political realm. He's in control of literally everything. And you know what? What's crazy about this, guys? God wants to be your friend. This is the God you serve. So when it's like, God, why I am why am I in this season of loneliness? Why am I in this season of trials and tribulations? My family's going through it, financial situations, the, the I mean, whatever it may be, marital problems. I mean, let's keep it real. It, it, we got to be real. Lord, why am I going through this? Just understand. He knows what's best. He gives he's he's wise. He's all knowing. He's all powerful. Now, I wish I, I listen, we're going to be here till 12 o'clock in my time, but everybody knows the dream. Can someone, young people, uh, the chat is blowing up. What's good, everybody? Listen, tell me, don't, don't look at your Bible. I need someone to tell me the five kingdoms. Go. Somebody tell me the five kingdoms. Let's see if the amazing facts youth are really on point. Whoa, that's not the first one. Thank you, Brandon. We need, we need the first one. We got to go in order. You can't go to Greece without, thank you. Babylon, that's the head of gold. All right, next. What's the chest and arms of silver? Not Greece. Sorry, Dante. Medo Persia. Very good. Medo Persia. Sorry, next. The bre the 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 uh the thighs of brass. Beautiful. Greece. And what about those long legs of iron? Rome. Okay, what about the miry clay mixed with the potters uh, uh with the iron? Mixed nations. Okay, come on, guys. You got to get better than that. Come on, everybody. Come on. We need details here, guys. De vision. Okay, very good. Ten divisions of Rome. Listen, did was Rome ever conquered? It was not. Rome divided and fell apart inwardly. Okay, how did they start dividing and falling apart? They tried to mix church and state, right? Miry clay representing God's people, clay representing God's people. Good doctrine is oh, now Lord. turning to miry clay because it's mixed with iron, which what is iron? The political realm, which is Rome. So whenever you try to combine church and state and unite the world with God, it's not going to cleave. It's not going to work. And God, listen, check this out, guys. This is the foundational chapter of all Bible prophecy. Babylon, Medo-Persia. Greece, Rome. Now, there's two phases of Rome, right? The long legs of iron, that's pagan Rome. That's the Rome where Jesus was crucified. You know, Jesus lived in literally pagan Rome. But when you get the miry clay mixed with the iron, that is papal Rome. Divi beautiful. Ernest was good from Maryland. Good answer. That's papal Rome. That's when everybody starts to try to say, listen, it's the crazy thing about this is young people. You know, we expect the persecution to be in Rome, right? You know, you see the gladiators, you know, Christians are being fed to lions. That's literally political Rome. That is the empire of Rome. That's normal, right? That's normal. What's not normal is this. A church now runs the state. Mm, and that's going to get crazy because when we get to the end of Daniel, it's going to come back again. So God is saying, listen, just as this union of church and state is trying to come, gonna combine, they're going to try to force worship. This stone's going to hit the image. Now, I'm going to give you some details. This is an idol. And, you know, the idol is being stoned. Have mercy. You know, there, there's a couple things in the Bible why people were stoned. One was breaking the Sabbath. Whoa. One was adultery. Whoa. And uh, those are just few of them. What does ba modern Babylon do? Do they worship the sun? Have mercy. Do they break the Sabbath? Yes, they do. Do they commit spiritual fornication? Yes, they do. Why do you think the image is being stoned? Have mercy. Whoa, did I not tell you guys bars are going to be dropped tonight? Yeah, you didn't even. Wow. Okay, we're going to have a discussion after this. Anybody have any questions? Because I'm running. I'm, I'm like, I'm like Sharika Richardson. I'm running, guys. I'm out. So here we go. Chapter three. Let me know if I'm going too fast. Chapter three, guys. 
This is this is heavy stuff. Now Nebuchadnezzar is so hyped on himself. The guy's hyped. He says, I had this dream and Daniel revealed it. Praise the Lord. God bless Daniel. You know what? But I think my kingdom is going to last forever. So I'm going to build a literal statue, 90 by nine, right? Nine, 90 feet high, nine feet wide. Okay. And I'm going to make it all of gold and I'm going to have everybody literally bow down and worship this image. Now, what's so important is, hey, Okay, you want someone to worship your image, but we don't we should have a choice, number one, which they don't. So we see again, ancient Babylon is doing a, a couple things that we're going to see in modern Babylon. Here's number one. It's force worship. OK, so you got force worship and Daniel is not in the picture. His three friends are. OK, so Nebuchadnezzar says, OK, Daniel, he's pretty he's pretty faithful. Let me check you who his three friends are. And the, one of the key points here, guys, is that music plays a part in people worshiping this image that the king sets up. OK, now we live in a society where music is big. I mean, songs are blowing up because Instagram reels. You got these these songs in your head all day because you went through 10 reels and now you want to sing unavailable. And now you want to sing. I got this whatever that girl sings about. You know, I'm got Milky Way in my veins. I don't even know what she's saying. And then you want to see, then you want to sing the people running, um, Jesus Christ, I'm about to sin again. Excuse me? Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Jesus Christ, I'm about to sin again. Oh man, Dante, you don't know about these songs? Praise the Lord. If you're on social media, you know the trend of these girls. I don't even know their names. They're literally the first line of the song is Jesus Christ, I'm about to sin again. And I'm about to go get with this guy and mess around with him. What? And you know how many young people know the song? And low key, the, the, the Granite Bay youth don't want to say that they know that song. It's okay. It's all over everywhere. But the message being portrayed and given to young people is, Jesus, I'm going to sin again. So just take me as I am and I'll, I'll just deal with it. No. People, you, we don't understand how music is going to play a part in end time worship. And let's go. Let's be real. We're going to go there. You, everybody knows the church where you walk into the church. You got a coffee, a donut. You can't even see the person next to you. There's smoke, lights and mirror. And these are Adventist churches. And everybody's turning up. Listen, guys, turn to the person next to you and say, I feel you. I feel the spirit. Dude, I can't even see you, bro. I don't even know what we're doing in here. But these are Adventist churches thinking that, hey, if we play music like the world, we can get the world's results. This is why I want to tell you why, young people. This is why your parents are so like, man, we need we're going to a church like Granite Bay and we're going to, to these churches that are seeking to do God's will, that want to worship God in holiness, because what's the alternative? You're going to a church where we're going to turn up. It's emotional. It's loud. Your 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 frontal lobe is literally shot. Why? Because you took the coffee, number one problem. Now you now you got adrenaline to 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 fight a, a bear or run away from a lion. And then you sit down and then you're like, man, I'm dead tired. I need another coffee. But then they hand you a donut and you're all coked up on sugar. Then the praise song comes on. And what happens? Man, there's smoke, there's lights and everybody's rocking out like we're in, we're in a regular concert. I mean, you look at a Drake concert, you look at a Playboy Cardi concert, you look at Coachella. It's almost the same thing, low key, as some of our worship services in Adventist churches. And what is the point, young people? That at some point, some point it's going to be this. This music is going to force people to bow down to an image and break God's law. Mm. And God is looking for Hananiah, Meshels, and Azariah, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that says this in verse 18, in verse 17. If it be so, our God, uh, excuse me, verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, will, whom we serve, is able to deliver us. From the burning fiery furnace, and he shall deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we shall not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image 
which thou hast set up. Here are some young men. They're still young, about our age, your age. I mean, I'm 35. People think I'm an old head. It's okay, though. 30, these guys are 18, 17, 16, 19 years old. I mean, and they're standing up to a king who can cut your head off and literally throw you into this fiery furnace. He can do whatever he wants to you. And they say, we're not careful. We're, we're sticking with God. We're not bowing down. Listen, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go and act like I'm tying my shoe and then like just bow down or like trip and fall over. Like, Oh, how did I get here? You guys know those memes, how you got there. Like, man, I was supposed to do work today. I'm supposed to be on a diet and you fall and the sandwich is there and the, and the drink is there and the, the, the sugar and the cookies are there. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't do that. They didn't say, man, I'm going to bow down just to look like I'm doing, but in my heart, God knows my heart. No, they made a stance. Listen. And where did Jesus meet them? Come on, put, put me in the chat. Sh show me the emoji where Jesus met them. This is literally pre-incarnate Jesus. This is Jesus before he comes to this, this earth. Jesus met him where? Where's Flamos? Thank you. Flames. He met him. He met him in the flames. Now, check this out, guys. You guys are thinking to meet Jesus in the rainbows, in the skies, in a good life. No. You know where you're going to meet Jesus? In the fire. And we're, what are we doing? What, young people, what do we do? We're trying to run from the fire. We don't want to be in the fire anymore. Lord, get me out the fire. But God is saying this. I want you to experience me. But you have to understand the best way to experience me is in through trial and suffering for my name's sake. So if you're in the fire this evening, count it all joy. God, I'm, you're in the flames, man. I'm in the I'm in the best spot, whether it's heat or cold. I'm in the best spot when I'm with Jesus. Surrender your life to Jesus, stay faithful to him, and listen, you can have power, whether it's raining, sunny, cold, hot, you have Holy Spirit power inside you to do the will of God. And what is the biggest point of this? Listen, guys, beautiful. Thank you for that text. What's the point? Daniel is witnessing to King Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah, you guys got this, right? You think Daniel doesn't know what's going on? Daniel's been trying to witness since chapter one. Now, listen, how is Daniel doing it? Is he being like super, you know, sometimes weird Adventist where it's like I got a track and I'm like sneaking around putting stuff on people's day? Like, no, Daniel is being a normal seven day Adventist in front of Nebuchadnezzar. I have my standards, I have my values, and I'm purposing in my heart to serve God and not man. Daniel chapter two, he relies on God. Nebuchadnezzar is seeing all of this. This is why when you get to chapter four, what is Nebuchadnezzar doing? This is one of the most unspoken chapters in Daniel. What's going on with when chapter four? It's the crazy conversion of King Nebuchadnezzar. And he's saying, dude, after Daniel chapter one, after Daniel chapter two, after Daniel chapter three, I now see that I want to serve this God. We're moving to Daniel chapter four. But, and check this out. Daniel tells him, listen, man, your king's gonna, kingdom's going to be taken away if you don't get your life together. Especially if you don't start giving back to the poor and oppressed people. And if you don't break off your sins by righteousness, right doing, Nebuchadnezzar, live a righteous life. Does Nebuchadnezzar listen? No. Nebuchadnezzar goes crazy and insane for seven years, guys. Seven years. You thought, listen, this, I'm a, you thought this whole nail thing being like three inches long, girls, you know what I'm talking about. What's up with the, and guys, listen, what's up with the girls with five inch nails thinking that this is a good look? It is not. But Nebuchadnezzar started that trend. Nebuchadnezzar had nails like eagle's claws, and he had so much hair, he would look like a bird. This is what the Bible says. You don't, you don't want to, you don't want to take it from me. Okay, you gonna you, and you guys thought that Netflix was better than reading the Bible? Wow! Come on, guys! Come on, guys! I need my Granite Bay youth with. Me. Listen, it says this. Verse 27, wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee. Break off thy sins by righteousness, thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. Daniel is trying to say, bro, you want a peaceful life? Listen to God. 
You want a, a life that's filled with joy and true peace? Come on, break off these sins by righteousness and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. And what does Nebuchadnezzar do in verse 29 at the end of the 12 months? Nebuchadnezzar walked in his palace of the kingdom of Babylon and the king spake and said, is not this great Babylon that I have built? Problem number one, for the house of, of the kingdom by the might of my power and the honor of my majesty, have mercy. You know, we hear this in our homes someday. You know, if you raised in an old school family, you know, you've heard this is my house. Have mercy. Um, this is my money. And we I have to I have to pay my tithe. I mean, come on, guys. We return tithe. This house is God's house. This money is God's money. Everything we do is God's. But when we start to take the credit, that's when we start to go crazy. Here we go. I told you guys. Listen, when you are a slave to sin, you really are an animal. Here, I told you guys. Here we go. Listen, young people. Serving yourself is literally insanity. Living a sinful life, doing what you want, as many of the, the, the musicians and cultural icons say today, I literally do what I want. That's when you're lit. That's when you're truly insane. Nebuchadnezzar goes insane for seven years. Seven years just, just think about this. The greatest king of antiquity is literally chewing grass in the backyard. <laughs> Could you, I mean, Nebuchadnezzar, what are you doing? This is this would be in the Babylonian news. This would be all over their social media. There would be memes of Nebuchadnezzar everywhere. Do you guys get the picture? This is crazy because literally living for self is true insanity. What do animals do? And let's be real. I think we can be real in the Granite Bay Youth. Animals eat, sleep, and have intercourse with their mate of the other animal. That's it. What do people of the world, if you have no purpose, no godly purpose, your purpose is one, to have a good job, get married, get a, get money, get money, get more money, and more money. And if your first marriage doesn't work out, you can have five more. And if you don't want to get married, listen, guys, at least you guys can just co-mingle. Then you don't have to get married at all. This is the way of the world. It's literally insane. But when you look, put your eyes on Jesus, Nebuchadnezzar did this in verse 34. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven and my understanding returned. You want true understanding, young people? You want purpose in your life? I want purpose in my life. It only comes from looking at Jesus. Listen, we're not going to be able to stand in the flames when the Sunday law comes, the mark of the beast, the great image in, in Revelation chapter 13. We won't be able to stand unless we understand who Jesus is in the fire. We won't be able, be able to understand prophecy unless we're praying to God for wisdom and honoring our temples as we see in Daniel chapter 1 and chapter 2. Now, this is... It says in verse 2 of Daniel chapter 4, I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God hath wrought toward me. You know what a real sign and wonder is? Everybody's looking for someone to be healed. You know that's a trend too on Instagram and TikTok too. You got all these false prophets. Can I be real? They go to people and try. they supposedly start healing people, praying for people. You know, they're like, Hey, I saw you went through much abuse in your life. Like, bro, you're literally guessing or this is staged. I went through much abuse and you went through all this. And the person's like, yes, I did. It's like tarot reading, but with God. It's like, it's like palm reading, but with God. Honestly, you know what a true sign and wonder is, young people? A converted heart. A Nebuchadnezzar conversion. That's a true sign. That's a true wonder. Listen, oh, how much time do we have? When did I start here? Lord have mercy. I don't even think we're going to get through the whole book. Maybe we'll get through the first, the first six chapters. Daniel chapter five, I call it, it's party over, guys. You think that living a life of party, living the life of the, of the prodigal son is the way to go? I'm telling you it's not. Party is over. Listen, Daniel isn't getting to be an old man and you got a new king on the scene. Young Belshazzar, this guy is 
is is the new king. He's the young dude who thinks he can flex on the Medo Persians who are literally outside the Babylonian walls. Now, here's some facts to you about ancient Babylon. Ancient Babylon had at least 12 years of food stored in its in its in its walls. Its walls were so thick they were the length of a, a of a two of a of a um of a highway, a back and forth going forward two two lane highway. They could ride chariots on the walls of Babylon. That's how thick they were. Do you guys get that? Babylon literally had the Nile River in its flowing through the middle of the city. I mean, it had the seven wonders of the world in the hanging gardens. And, and you know how you got those hanging gardens? R uh, yes, River Euphrates. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for that. Did I say Nile River? I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> River Euphrates, running right through it, had a hanging garden, one of the seven wonders of the world literally in Babylon. These people were so confident, so prideful. It's like, dude, you're the, the Medo-Persians are outside of the wall and we're so confident in our city that we're going to throw a party. This is not just any party. It's raunchy. It's nasty. It's sexual. There's good food. There's meat. There's drinking. There's men and women and harlots and concubines and everybody's getting turned up. It's all pleasure and all game and fun. It's all fun and games, young people, until you see a literal hand floating around writing something you can't understand. You see, the world right now is all full of pleasure, guys. It's all pleasure. Let's turn up. Let's have a let's let, let's let's see who has Riz. Let's see who could talk to any of the girls. Let's see what new girls at church we can holler at. Let's go to this party. Let's do this. Let's have fun while I'm young. Let me tell you something. It's why you're having fun is judgment falls upon Babylon. Judgment falls upon Babylon and Belshazzar doesn't know what's going on. The Bible describes, if you read, his knees are shaking and they're banging each other. The knees are literally, I mean, they're hitting each other because he's so scared. Party's over, guys. Party is over. Daniel says this, listen. You've been weighed in the balance and found wanting in verse 25 to 28. You've been weighed in the balance and found wanting. Your days are numbered. The kingdom is divided. Kingdom is divided. And, you know, he, he, he he's clothed. He's he gets the Gucci robes and he gets the, the Jesus piece. Right. And they put a chain about his neck and they proclaim him as the third ruler in the kingdom. But he knows who Daniel knows that the Medo-Persians are literally at the door. Now, check this out. Historically, guys, the Medo-Persians are known for this. They're maritime experts. They literally know how to manipulate the water. They know how to use the water to serve their purposes. So what did they do? They didn't bust through a gigantic wall. No, uh, Cyrus and Darius are there like, man, dude. Why don't we just divert the river Euphrates, go in underneath, and everybody's party, and we take over the whole thing. A simple solution destroys ancient Babylon right there. Young people, Daniel was given a three-part judgment message. You know, we have a three-part judgment message as well, right? That's called the three angels message. I'm telling you guys, you didn't see that, did you? We have a three-part judgment message. Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of judgment is come. And what and the second the second angel's message, someone put it in the chat. Someone come on young people, I need you guys alive with me. Babylon beautiful. Babylon is what? Don't put one fallen, two fallen. Thank you. Babylon is fallen is fallen. You got the third angel's message is what? The mark of the beast. Right? If any man accept the mark of the beast and the wrath of God will be poured out with indignation, everybody knows this is a message of mercy and judgment. This is a message that all our sermons, all our studies should be encapsulated in the everlasting gospel, the three angels' messages. We're a prophetic people just like Daniel, and we're called to give this message to Babylon. Now, Babylon is a city of confusion, guys. And now literal Babylon is, is, is so prideful. They want to put their word above God's word. 
and ancient Babylon is doing the same thing. A ancient, ba uh, I mean, modern Babylon is doing the same thing. Ancient Babylon worshiped the sun. Modern Babylon says, listen, Sunday is a sacred day. Uh oh, here we go. Ancient Babylon says it's man's word above God's word. Modern Babylon says what? Hey, man, I'm God's I'm God's vicar on earth. I'm Christ's vicar. You come to me before you go to God. <laughs> Ancient Babylon, we can go. The is, is the list goes on and on, guys. But God is calling us to stand like Daniel, to give this message of judgment and of mercy so that the people who are in Babylon in, in Revelation chapter 18 and says, come out of her, my people. Right. There's people in Babylon confused, drinking, turned up, confused, not literally. You know, once we start to move into the spiritual realm, you know, people in modern Babylon aren't literally drunk all the time. You understand that? Liter ain't, modern Babylon is spiritual drunkenness. Spiritual drunkenness is my grandmother is floating in heaven and she's looking down on me as I'm going through all these problems in my life. Spiritual drunkenness is, man, Sunday is the day of worship. You guys, you know, Jesus rose from the dead. We're in the new covenant. You should be going to church on Sunday. You're legalistic. This is spiritual drunkenness. You see? Immortality of the soul and Sunday sacredness constitute the wine of Babylon. So listen, don't get drunk off the wine of Babylon. Daniel chapter 6, you guys already know it. Daniel chapter 6, it says he understands that a devotional life is the only way that's going to get you through the last days. You think COVID was crazy? It's going to get even crazier. And we need prayer. We need thanksgiving. We need meditation. We need bold devotion in the face of a death penalty. Daniel stands for God as he's kneeling on his knees three times a day. This is the only way young people are going to make it is through prayer. And I know it's hard to pray sometimes. It's difficult to talk to a God that you may not know or you think is always looking down upon you to judge you. But once you turn your eyes and study God's word, you study Jesus, you understand that God loves you. He hates the sin, but he loves the sinner. He's hard on sin, but he's soft on sinners. If you understand God literally wants you to be happy and holy, man, you'll have a, a, a different view, a different worldview of who God is. And Daniel, he stays faithful. And these lions... Don't even say, man, listen, you're not even appetizing to me. The angels shut the lion's mouth. Daniel chapter seven, guys, we're going, baby. I haven't stopped yet. We got it. We are. I think I've been going for 45 minutes, but we're going, guys. <clears throat> Daniel chapter seven, same as Daniel chapter two. You have Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome. But now we have the new phase of Rome here. It's in verse eight. And I considered the horns, and there came up among them another little horn. So here we have the same outline of Daniel chapter 2. The lion with eagle's wing is Babylon, right? Come on, guys. The bears with three ribs in its mouth and a side up is what? Medo-Persia. And I'll give you some little details. Those three ribs are Babylon, Lydia, and Egypt. Three, con three conquered nations from Medo-Persia. Okay. The, the 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 bear that's raised up on one side is showing the power that Persia had over media. Persia ended up being stronger than media. That's why he's raised up on one side. Now you have a leopard with four heads and eagle's wings. This this nation is none other than Greece. And Greece, uh, listen, Alexander the Great died from drinking way too much. And he, some people say he died of malaria. Some people say he died, said he died of overdosing on alcohol, but he died and he had no air. So what happened in the chat? Can you guys tell me what happened to Greece? How did Greece retain its power after Alexander the Great died? Come on, guys. And if you can name, uh, we'll, we'll wait till that after. Divided among his, Ernest, man. Whoa, Dante, Dan, yo, you guys are prophetic young people. Praise the Lord. Divided among his generals. 
Can anybody name the four generals? Wow, guys. Listen, this is not – this is not uh, – what's the game you guys played at the beginning here? I'm trying to remember it. Cahoots. Listen, we're not cahooting no more, bro. We need, we, we need these names. So, Lucas, okay, very good. Next one. Lysimachus. Look at the spellings on point two. Come on, young people. Here we go. What's the next one? Starts with a C. All right, I'll help you guys out. Ptolemy's one. Good job, Ernest. And Cassander. You got Cassander, Lysimachus, Seleucus, and Ptolemy. Beautiful. And 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 Cassander goes to the west. Seleucus goes to the north. So, uh, I mean, Lysimachus goes to the north. Seleucus goes to the east. And Ptolemy goes to the south. This is why when we get to Daniel chapter 11, all the pastors are scared to talk about it. Man, Daniel 11, king of the north, king of the south. Those are Daniel's. Those are those are uh, Alexander the Great's generals. That's how it started, guys. We're gonna get there. So we see now this this undescribable beast that is dreadful, strong teeth uh, with teeth, great teeth that iron teeth that devours everything and stamps it out and breaks everything in the pieces is none other than pagan Rome. Everybody knows that, right? After Greece is pagan Rome, but this little horn. Is papal Rome, right? And it plucks up three of the roots of these little horns, right? These horns are kingdoms. Those 10 kingdoms, those 10 toes, the Bible is repeating and enlarging. Is this making sense, guys? Can I get a hands up, hands up, thumbs up? Vic, are we making sense here? Praise the Lord. Do I get a thumbs up? No, everybody's giving me thumbs down. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, the Bible repeats and enlarges so we have again the same four kingdoms guys it's not it's not that difficult under the inspiration of the holy spirit guys babylon meda persia greece pagan rome papal rome easy guys easy but because of the ridiculous ratchet blasphemous words of papal rome there has to be a judgment this is why when you study the judgment you know as Adventist young people, we don't understand these things, but there's a judgment because of what Rome does. Rome then goes on. If you study Daniel chapter 7 further on, we all know verse 25 is famous. He shall speak great words against the Most High. He shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time, times, and dividing of times. What scholar knows what that means? Come on, guys. I need a scholar in here. Where does... Oh, Dante, let me know. He knows. Okay, Dante's ready. 1260 years. Brilliant. Beautiful. Beautiful. You know, guys, listen, we're, I'm going to be real. Listen, I live in New York, guys. We're going to be on Fox News. We're going to be on the Breakfast Clubs. We're going to be on Joe Rogan's podcast. We're going to be interviewed by people in the last days wanting to know what's going here. So you think this is just like, oh, guys, this is just a Friday night. We need to know this. Because we're going to stand before Joe Biden, if he's the president then. We're going to stand before kings, uh, uh, whoever, governors, officials, to give an account. Hey, you guys know what this twelve, this time, times, and dividing of times is? And we got to be able to explain it. Beautiful. It's 1,260 years. You look at historical Rome. You know, it's said that uh, historians estimate that 100 million people died during the 1260 years of papal persecution now if god was in a loving god he would say eh, who cares but god is a loving god he says no this this entity that is literally run by satan because we see that in revelation 13 it's the dragon gives the the beast his authority and his seat satan is saying this i want to kill god's people you see, these Daniels have multiplied throughout the time, throughout centuries. There's a whole bunch of Daniel, Hananiah, Michel, and Azariah, and I want to kill them. So I'm going to use the papacy to destroy God's people. And he's going to think to change the law of God. He's going to think to say, you know what? Saturday is the holy day is actually really Sunday. He's going to think to do it. But God, it says in verse 27, Verse 26, but the judgment shall sit and they shall be taken away by his dominion to consume and destroy it unto the end.
and the kingdom and dominion of the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the saints of the most high whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominion shall serve and obey him. God is, we see Jesus and the father having this judgment to determine who are the saints that are going to possess the kingdom by God's grace, young people, we're going to be saints that possess the kingdom despite the persecution that's going to happen. How many people I still got here with me? 25. Praise the Lord. The numbers are going up. Young people, if you don't know who I am, I'm Victor Mills. I'm an elder in, in the Middletown Seventh-day Adventist Church in New York, Orange County, New York. Um, those who are jumping on, what's up? We're going through a summary of the books of Daniel. Is everybody okay? Are you guys bored? Let me see. You, got, you can keep it real, Vic. You're going too fast. Vic, this doesn't make sense. You can let me know um, because I love Daniel, guys, and I love um, explaining things that people say are complex in a simple way. Um, so this is why there's a judgment, guys. There's a judgment because the little horn, the papal power, decides to continue to destroy God's law, his covenant, and destroy his people. So God has to say, man, dude, there's so much wickedness and death and destruction. I need to judge this entity, and I will do it. And they will be destroyed at the second coming. You guys understand? See, we the rock in Daniel chapter 2 cannot hit the foot, cannot hit the feet. There cannot be a second coming without a judgment. Who? How do you determine who's going to be in heaven? This is why you have Daniel chapter 7. There has to be a judgment. We got to understand who are the saints of the kingdom and who are the wicked people of the kingdom. Boom. Now we get to Daniel chapter eight, guys. And this is super. You know, all the Adventists love this chapter because it talks about the cleansing of the sanctuary. But now we see a couple more beasts. And these beasts are the same beasts, are the same entities of the beasts in Daniel chapter seven and Daniel chapter two. It's the same outline, except now this is centered for God's people. All of Daniel was written in Aramaic. You guys understand that? The known language of the time, except for this chapter. This chapter is written in Hebrew. Why? Because this is specifically for God's people. This is why you see Babylon, you don't see Babylon in this chapter, right? You see in verse 21 and verse 20, you see the ram in verse 20. Again, young people, we don't make this up. I just want you to know here's a little point, guys. You know, Adventists just don't make this up, guys. We literally let the Bible interpret itself. So how do you know the next kingdom is Medo-Persia? Because listen, verse 20 says, The ram which thou sawest having two horns are the kings of Media and Persia. Did I make that up? No. The Bible interprets itself. Well, how do you know Greece is next, Victor? How do you know that? Look, and the rough goat is the king of Grecia. And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. The first king of Grisha is none other than who? Alexander the Great. You see, young people, we are historicists. There's three methods of biblical interpretation. This is, this is what separates us from evangelicals. This is what separates us from other Protestants. Many Protestants are preterists. And I don't know if you know this. If you do, praise the Lord. Preterists believe that Bible prophecy has already been fulfilled. That the Antichrist has already come and we don't need to worry about it. Futurists, which is many, Elevation Church, uh, Hillsong, Matt, all these people are futurists. They say the Antichrist has not come yet. He's going to come in the future. He's this, in this political power. They have all these things in the future. So you don't have to worry about the mark of the beast. You don't have to worry about the Antichrist because that's future. That's in the tribulation time. We are historicists. God is the Alpha and Omega. He's the present. He's the past, present, and future. That's how we interpret the Bible. We look at history. So in verse, I, I failed to mention this. In Daniel chapter 7, what do beasts represent, guys? This is, this, this, this is the key. I, I can't believe I missed this. What do beasts represent in Daniel chapter 7, verse 17? Beautiful kingdoms. So these are nations, political kingdoms, powers. Beautiful, Jack. Thank you. So when we get to more beasts, it's more kingdoms. Again, reiterating Medo-Persia and Greece. Now, why is Medo-Persia so important here, guys? The Bible brings out Medo-Persia because 
the cleansing of the sanctuary, this this great 2300 days that every every Adventist is so concerned about is important because during this time, you cannot have a judgment. OK, so let's let's look at the pattern. You can't have a second coming without a judgment. You can't have a judgment without a cleansing of the sanctuary. You see it, guys? So there needs to be a cleansing. When do we see the sanctuary cleansed? Come on, scholars. Where do we see it cleansed? In Leviticus chapter 16 is the Day of Atonement. That's the only time in Hebrew history there's one day out of the year that the sins are literally cleansed and blotted out from the sanctuary that's the Day of Atonement. This is why Adventist people are so like, hey, the Day of Atonement, Day of Atonement. This is why, guys. So I, I love to tell you, tell young people why Adventists do what they do. This is why. So these 2,300 days are given to Daniel. Daniel doesn't know what it is. He's scared. He's like, man, what's going on? He wants to, again, know more about this horn, which is this little horn, again, is it's in its two phases, representing pagan Rome and papal Rome. Okay. Now, if you're really theological, we won't get into what the daily means in um, verse verses um, 11 and 12, the daily sacrifice. We won't get into that. Um, I believe just for some scholars, I know there's some young scholars out here and uh, just for the Granite Bay uh, uh, leadership. I believe paganism is the daily sacrifice. Paganism has to be get taken away for the papacy to come through. I don't believe it's the sanctuary above, but, you know. Most av there's two camps in Adventism, but literally historically, paganism has to be removed so that the papacy can come through, and it does just that. And it again, and the, and and Daniel says, "Man, how long is this going to be?" And he said unto me, verse fourteen, unto two thousand three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. So we get a starting point. We get this whole timeline. Dude, what's 2,300 days? The sanctuary is going to be cleansed in 2,300 days. That's all I'm giving you guys. That's all we're getting. But Daniel's like, man, what's going on? What about this, this other kingdom? What about this little horn that he has? He, he, he has his policy that causes craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. And, pee, and by peace shall he destroy many in verse 25. What does this all mean? Daniel literally fainted. Dude, just imagine this. Whoa, God, I just got this dream. I don't even understand what it means. But you're telling me, Gabriel's telling me what it means, but I still don't get the whole thing. He fainted and was sick for certain days, and he rose up and did the king's business and was astonished at the vision, but none understood it. Daniel doesn't get what's going on. It's crazy that Daniel, we have more understanding than Daniel, than Daniel did. <laughs> it's crazy. Then you get to chapter 9. Daniel, guys, the 70 years of captivity it prophesied is almost up. Daniel here now is really old. He's an old man, but he's praying to God and saying, listen, Lord, I just saw a vision of the 2300 days. And I know our 70 years of captivity are almost up because I'm studying the prophet Jeremiah in Daniel chapter 9 verse 2. 70 years is almost up. But what about this 2300 years? God, are we going to be in Babylon for 23 more hundred years? Oh, let me let me let me clarify myself. A day for a year. Young people, tell me, where do we get this day for a year concept? I, I speak like you guys already know this stuff. Um, where do we get for a day, a day for a year? Numbers. Ernest, give me some specific guys. Give me some specific. Ezra, OK, let's give me some verses. Show me the verse. <laughs> I used to have a guy in my church. Where he would ask a questions, no, that's not it. Numbers fourteen, no, it's numbers close. You you mix Ezekiel, you mix the Ezekiel one and the numbers one, but it's okay. Numbers, come on guys, come on. Where do we get for a day for a year? Is come on guys, we got a lot of question marks. Where are the scholars at? Granite Bay, where are we at? <laughs> where are we at for the day for a year principle, guys? Ezekiel 4, 6, Numbers 14, 34. There we go, guys. A day in Bible prophecy is a year, right? That's how we, and literally it makes sense, right, guys? Because listen, 2,300 literal days is how many years? Come, Someone do the math. I know we got a lot of math 
gurus. How many days? No, not yet. How many literal days is 2,300 days? How long is that in a year? How many years is 2,300 days literally? Come on, guys. Come on. I know we got some, we got some mathematicians in here. People are, people are hiding. Josiah is hiding. I see you, bro. You're hiding. No, no, no. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Three, uh, no, 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 no. 839? No, it is. Okay, Dante says it is. Okay, how many years is that? I used the calculator. Very good. Okay, let me tell you guys something. 2,300 literal days. How, how long did Medo-Persia last? Medo-Persia lasted. Let's look at my Bible from 539 to 331 BC. That's longer than literally 2,300 literal days. It is six years. Beautiful. A little over six years, those six years. Beautiful. So how can four kingdoms rise and fall in six years? It has to be a day for a year. Do you guys get that? It's inherent in the text. Like a, a kingdom, Medo-Persia lasted way longer than six years. So it can't be literal. This is why we we use Numbers 14.34 and Ezekiel 4.6 a day for a year. Make sense, guys? Because it can't be literal because it doesn't even one kingdom lasted way longer than that. OK, so Daniel is spazzing out, guys. Listen, I know I'm going over an hour. Are you guys still with me? Twenty four people. Praise the Lord. Um, Daniel prays one of the most beautiful prayers. Young people, if you ever want to find a prayer to to read and understand is in Daniel chapter 9. Daniel prays a beautiful prayer showing the condition of the people and of himself. Daniel doesn't say, man, I'm holier than thou. Daniel says, we have sinned. I've sinned. Lord, if we're going to be here for 23 more hundred years, Lord, have mercy on us. We're, all, we're supposed to go back home soon. We're trying to go back to Jerusalem. And now that I got this vision and literally as he's praying the prayer, guys, now notice this. For Daniel chap chapter nine. Says this. Says this here. Verse 20. While I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of people of my people and presenting my supplication before the Lord, my God for the holy mountain of my God. Yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I have seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. He informed me and talked to me and said this, Daniel, I am now come to give thee skill and understanding. Okay. At the beginning of, it says, at the beginning of thy supplication, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art what? Greatly beloved. You see, young people, if you did not think that God does not love you, Gabriel here has a message for you this evening. God loves you, man. And when you pray to him, he's ready to answer you. And Desire of Ages says this, young people, the number one prayer. You know you pray, and sometimes you got to wait, or God says no, or says maybe. You know how people say, you know. There's three ways God answer you. Maybe, no, yes, whatever. The only prayer that he answers literally right on the spot is what? Someone tell me. Chat, where are we at? The prayer that God answers every time just like that. Help, very good. Anyone else? Lord, forgive me of my sin. Boom. Lord. Help me to over beautiful forgiveness. Help me to overcome this habit that's literally killing me. Let's go right away. Lord, help me. Help me. That's right. Lord, forgive me. Jesus will forgive you. It says 1 John 1, 9, if I, we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all, from all unrighteousness. So Daniel's praying and praying and praying. Hmm, a miracle we take for granted. Exactly. Daniel's praying and praying and praying, Lord, what about the people? What about your people and about your city? And Gabriel says, you know what? 
you know how much I care? So you know how greatly beloved you are, Daniel? I'm not even going to tell you about your people. I'm not just going to tell you about your people. I'm not going to tell you about your city. But I'm going to tell you that Jesus himself is coming. And in the 70-week prophecy of Daniel chapter 9, you get the starting point of the 2300 days. You get the starting point of the 2300 days. You get the messianic prophecy of Jesus. This is why man, <laughs> rabbis, there's a, there's a known, um, there's a known quote. I don't have it, but it said, it basically goes, cursed is the man who counts the prophecies of the Messiah in Daniel chapter nine. You count the numbers of the, the whole Jewish Nate, the whole Jewish, I mean, Jews today literally do not want to read this text because this text tells them that Jesus is coming. Jesus comes on time. He comes in AD 27. He's baptized, guys. He starts his ministry for three and a half years. And he dies in AD 31 in the midst of the 70 of the seven years of the 70 week prophecy at the tail end. Jesus dies. AD 34, Stephen is stoned. But we get the starting point, guys, and that's the key. How do we get the starting point? It says this. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people in the holy city. That's 490 years, right? So the 490 years is for the Jewish people. They have 490 years to get their life together. You see how merciful God is? This is why Peter says, how many times do we forgive? Seven times? Jesus says 70 times seven. How much is 70 times seven? 490. Jesus knew because Jesus is literally giving um, this inspiration and spirit of prophecy to Daniel. Jesus knew, guys. And so 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city to finish transgression, to make an end of sin, to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and the prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Boom. Basically, I'm, I'm going to explain it real quick. And if you have questions, I'm sure you can ask Pastor Doug, you can ask Pastor Tony, they'll give you books and literature. Listen, Jerusalem's going to be destroyed. Jesus is going to come. The Messiah is going to make a reconciliation for you. He's going to bring in everlasting righteous righteousness. But because you don't accept Jesus as the Messiah, you're going to be left in a desolation. Whoa, grapes of wrath. Oh, beautiful. This is why 26 verse 26 says, and the end of the war, desolations are determined. Literally, because the Jews rejected Jesus, they were left desolate. What's the application for you and us? When you leave, when you literally step away from Jesus and look to yourself and look to the world, it's desolation, guys. Desolation is done. When you mix the world and the church together, it's desolation. Tell me, young people, how did Jesus die? Literally, how did how did Jesus literally die? How did he get crucified? Who who organized that? Young people, young people. The Romans, okay, but who got who who linked up with the Romans? Oh man, and who's the rabbis? Church, boom, Jack, my man Jack's ready. He said, he said, I'm literally getting the MVP. Check this out: union of church and state. The the church, the Jews. Hey, we want to kill this guy who's literally all he does is good but he's blasting us and showing us that we're fake and Pharisee and actors in a play. We want to kill him, but we can't kill him because we're not a nation because we're so um, desolated. And we're so uh, not the people who we used to be that we're under the guard and rulership of Rome. So I need to get Rome on my side so that I can kill this man. So the church unites with the state to crucify Jesus. So in the last days, the church is going to unite with the state to crucify and destroy God's people who follow the lamb wherever he goes. You see the theme in Daniel, guys? The desolation, the abomination, everything falls apart in life, in the political realm, in the spiritual realm, when you unite the church with the world. Boom. Desolation. 
70 AD, Titus comes and ransacks Jerusalem. Literally, he tries to save it. If you read the Great Controversy, he tries to save it, guys. But you know what happens? A little, little fire starts. God's providence knew because Jesus said not one stone left upon another. It's done. It's over. And Jesus said it ha will happen, and it happened. Daniel is a beautiful book, young people. I'm coming to a close now in the last three chapters. The last three chapters are one vision. Daniel chapter 10, 11, and 12 are one straight vision. Daniel, again, is fasting and praying for 21 days. He's not eating any sweet bread, not eating and drinking any. Uh, um, it says, um, no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in his mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Low key, some people want to say, you see, Daniel ate meat later on and he drank alcohol. You see, we can do the same thing. No, guys, listen, Daniel's consistent. You think he'd be getting visions as he's buzzed up? I'm sorry, guys. I am sorry. You think he, Daniel would get a vision with his frontal lobe impaired? I'm sorry, guys. Doesn't make sense to me. But here, this is key, guys, because we see the great controversy unfolding here in Daniel chapter 10. So much, guys, that Daniel needs us to receive this vision. But there's somebody blocking him. And this, and we have two men here. There's a certain man, right? There's a certain man who is Jesus Christ, which is described in verse 4, 5, right? Clothed in linen, whose learn, loins were girded with fine gold as you fast. His body was like burl, his face and appearance as lightning. And you say, Brother Vic, how do you get that? You go to Revelation chapter 1. John sees almost the same description of Jesus. Jesus meets Daniel to give him this, this to, so that he would understand this vision. But Gabriel is the one who actually tells him the vision. Okay? You're greatly beloved in verse 11, it says. You're greatly beloved. Fear not, it says, from the from the first day that thou set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself, thy God, the words were heard uh, before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty and one days. But Michael, the one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained with him there. Uh, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Young people, who is Michael? Jesus. I won't ask you how do we know that how can you prove it? Um, but if you want to write something in the chat, you can. Michael is a, a title given for Jesus. M Jesus is not an angel, right, guys? We know Jesus is not an angel, right? But it's a name given to Jesus when he's in great controversy warfare. Can anybody tell me the times where you find the name Michael in the Bible? Come on, guys. I'm telling you, this is cahoots on steroids. Like three. Okay, can someone give me some nit? Where? Oh, uh, well, we don't see. Ju okay, thank you, Brandon Allen. Yes, in Jude, we see that. Contending for the faith. Okay, but Michael contends for the body of Moses. He's in a great controversy warfare with Satan. All right? We see Michael here. Okay. Anywhere else you guys see Michael? Daniel chapter 12. Michael stands up. We're going to get to that very soon. Michael is a title given to Jesus. Okay, very good in Revelation 12, when he's fighting for you and for me. Okay, guys? So Michael, Gabriel cannot take satanic influences battling with Satan and the prince of Persia, who, which is Cyrus. And why is, why is um, the prince of Persia in such a great battle? Because he's fighting within himself and he's fighting with his own rulers and his own people trying to not let the Jews go back. Man, guys. Okay. We'll have to do, we'll have to do another Friday night just on that. But he's fighting because Jesus says, listen, 70 years and I'm going to send you back to Jerusalem, right? But Cyrus is the one who has to let them go. The decree has to come forth. But the satanic influence are saying, Cyrus, don't do it, man. Oh, and then you get the letters. When you read Nehemiah, the letters are being sent by the Samaritans. The letters are being sent. Listen, these Jews are, are trying to revolt. And Cyrus withholds it. And there's and, and all this drama for Israel not to be let go. But Jesus comes himself. 
and there he lets his people go free. It says, and, and um, in verse um, verse verse now, now I'm come to make thee understand. Verse fourteen: What shall befall thy people in the latter days? Okay, so what what days are we living in now, guys? Come on, come on, come on. Are we in the latter days? I think so. Birth pains, labor, okay. Latter days. Yes, we are. We are living in these days. So God is concerned about you and me. How is this all going to end, guys? Listen, are we going to be zapped by aliens? Are those those bodies that those the, the Mexican government found really aliens? I mean, are UFOs really real? I mean, how is this whole world going to end? The Bible tells us. This is why when your friends are out there like, yeah, man, like the UFOs are going to cut. Like, I don't even know what they're thinking, bro. But you guys, as young people, they're all racks. I know, dude. It's crazy. They are, Jack. It's but people want to believe something. But us as Seventh-day Adventist young people, we know how the story is going to end. Daniel, this vision is so important of Daniel chapter 11, guys, that Jesus himself had to come and give it to Daniel. Jesus had to battle so that Daniel could receive the vision of Daniel 11. Daniel 11 now goes into this, and I'll explain it as briefly as I can. There are again the kingdoms repeated. Medo-Persia, Greece, pagan Rome, and papal Rome. But these kingdoms now are divided from the four generals of Greece. Remember the four generals? They are be between all these wars, every all the generals are fighting for, for supremacy. There's left two generals, and they're named King of the North, King of the South. Remember we had four generals of Cassander, Lysimachus, Ptolemy, and Seleucus? Well, kings of the North. The, Seleuc the Seleucid Empire, Seleucus, was stronger than Cassander and Lysimachus. And Ptolemy went down south to Egypt. Okay, young people, so you get this in your mind that the king of the north is up, king of the south is down, and who's in the middle? Literally, geographically, young people, Jerusalem is right in the middle. King of the north is top, Jerusalem is here, south is here. And literally for years, the king of the north and the king of the south are fighting, and God's people are right in the middle. Mercy. The new king of the north is... The new king of the north and the new king of the south are people, are generals who take over. And I wish I could go into <clears throat> how accurate and how specific Bible prophecy is, but I don't have time. You guys will never invite me back again. Right? Everybody's going, ready to go to bed right now. Um, <clears throat> king of the north and king of the south. King of the south is Egypt. Oh, keep going. This is great. Dante, praise the Lord. It's not even me, but I love the book of Daniel Revelation, guys. I mean, and I I hope you guys get inspired that one day you can just pull out the, your Bible and explain, listen, this is boom, 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 boom. You know, I, I hope you guys get encouraged. But the king of the north and the king of the south, they have battles for years on end and God's people are right in the middle. That's That's literally a foreshadowing of what the end times are going to be. God's people are in the middle of everything. Literally, we're always in the middle of everything. Why? What's going to put us in the middle of the king of the north and the king of the south at the end? We want to follow God's law. And the king of the north turns into the papacy in verse 31. Um, it, it describes how the papacy became the papacy. You guys have to understand that we, we've established that pagan Rome shifted to papal Rome. But how do you become papal Rome? How does Rome, how does a church rule the state? Somebody tell me, put it in the chat. If I'm a church, right? Let's say we're, we're uh, on the church, Victor Mills. And I want to start commanding you people to do what I want you to do as young people. How do I do it? If I can't tell you, if I can't preach to you, how do I do it? I get the police from Granite Bay and I say, Granite Bay police, you now listen to me. All you young people from Granite Bay youth, if you don't support my ministry and what I teach as Victor Mills, I'm going to persecute you and put you in prison. Well, how can I do that? I'm a church. Well, here, I just hire the police to do it. Does everybody get that? 
So in 508, Clovis is a French king, and he wants to be converted into a Catholic. So he says, the least I can do for the Catholic Church is to give them an army. Oh, my goodness. This is the worst thing that could happen. The worst thing that could happen. So what does he do? He gives him an army due to his wife. His wife wants to convert him, this King Clovis, uh, into a Catholic. And Clovis, a Frank, a French general, gives an army to the papacy. 508 starts this transition and this period of the church literally running the state and that's where the problem it, did we did we not go over this guys you see what the bible's trying to tell you the way it's going to end young people is the church is going to find some way to unite with the state to persecute people who do not follow their line of reasoning their beliefs principles and doctrines How's the world going to end, guys? We talk about the mark of the beast in Revelation 13. We talk about the death penalty. You can't be able to buy or sell. These are all avenues things. How is it going to happen? The church, king of the north, the papacy alive and well today. I mean, listen, back when I wasn't even born in the 60s and 50s, I mean, you couldn't even, the, the separation of church and state was so strong. You had presidents that would stand an arm length away from the pope. So that people would say, listen, there's separation of church and state. Listen, hashtag guys, America. This is America. America, guys. Union of church and state is separate. We love separation of church and state. Well, listen, the world can never comprehend that it will come to a point that the Constitution will be repudiated. America. Thank you, Brandon. America. Um, and there will be a strong union of church and state but what do we see donald trump comes in 2016 now i'm not political i don't vote for nobody i vote for jesus praise the lord donald trump comes with spiritual advisors prayer breakfast uh bible studies uh, uh um a spiritual advisor that that says that this guy man is ordained that he is anointed that this is the man and you see all when do you when are we having Bible studies in the White House? I mean, what are we doing here? I mean, you start to see a real big merge of wow, religion in a political realm. And you hear public figures and political candidates, we need to get back to God, right? Doesn't America need God to succeed? Gotta be careful, guys, because one group of people will say, Yeah, we need to get back to God. If you don't believe if you don't listen to my God. Then we're going to get into a problem. And then you have another side. Let me, young people, you guys are literally intelligent people. I love you guys. Then you have another political party where what is the other political party advocate? Hey, man, I don't know. It's they, them, he, she, they, them, whoever the binary transitioning, whatever you want to do. Let's live life. Live it to, there's no God. Right? The political realm. Literally, I want to tell you something, guys. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm getting everywhere, but let me come back. King of the North, papacy. You got to know that. That's the papacy, king of the North. All right, guys? King of the South. Who's the king of the South? Somebody tell me something about Egypt. Egypt, what, what do we know about Egypt? Eight, wow, Ernest, what a guy, man. This guy's going to... Jack, you may lose the MVP, bro. You, listen, atheism. Why do we, biblically, why can we prove that Egypt is atheism? Somebody tell me. Go back to the Old Testament, back to Moses. What did Pharaoh say? King of Egypt. What did Pharaoh say when Moses said, Let my people go? Come on, guys. Work all day. Okay. All right. They wanted to take the Sabbath out. Good job. Good job. Okay. I get you. I get you. But what did Pharaoh literally say? Ah, Joseph. He's stealing it, man. Whoa, Ernest. He's trying to come back. Who is this God? Bro, you got young people. You have to understand the mindset of Egypt, the mindset of the king of the south is atheism. I believe in no God. So in the end times, there's going to be a war for the king of the north and the king of the south. The king of the north, papacy, the, the union of church, this union of, of, of 
all this false doctrine that we see today is going to unite, is going to unite and destroy the king of the south. So just get the picture here, guys. Let me just break this down as we wrap up because we're wrapping up. The king of the north is the papacy. The papacy is going to unite. With Protestantism America, which is false Protestantism, right, guys? Because we know the only true Protestant church in the whole world is who? Come on, guys. Who's the only church that's protesting? And we're not a perfect church, but it's the Seventh day Adventist. Why? You can say, why? What, what's so special about the Adventists? Let me tell you something, young people. Protestants are not true Protestants. Why? Because one, they're paying homage to Rome by worshiping on the first day of the week. You got that? You see how literally the harlot has her daughters? Apostate Protestantism. This is why when you go to evangelistic series, people call it apostate Protestantism. Because we claim to be a Christian nation, yet we're not. We're still connected to Rome because we believe in the false doctrines that Rome has still advocating for hundreds of years. All right. So this king of the, king of the north. This God, we want to bring God back into society. They will fight with the king of the South, this king of atheism, Marxism, communism, all this, all this godless society, and they will win. They will gore the king of the South and destroy the king of the South. So how does that happen? Revelation 13 tells us that through signs, wonders, and miracles, how can, how can you get King Jump ill? How can you get the leaders of China? How can you get Putin? How can you get all these atheists and, agnost and agnostics to believe that we should be worshiping on Sunday? Can somebody tell me? 22 people. I know everybody's dying. Everybody's leaving. Oh, man. My, my, my phone's about to die. My phone's about to die, young people. Well, that's not going to be good. Lord, help me here. Oh, man. This is not good. Don't die on me, Lord. <laughs> Oh, boy. Come on, phone. Come on. Oh, man. The appearance of Satan in angels light. That's exactly true. Hold on, guys. I got to get... Man, my, there we go. Okay, okay, okay. All right, guys. We're going to have to do it like this till my phone charges. Praise the Lord. Listen, how does it happen, young people? It's, it's this. Yes, signs and wonders. How do you... What do atheists say? Atheists say this. If I don't see it, I'm not going to believe it. Correct? Am I correct? So when they see signs and wonders, when they see fire coming down from heaven, when they see spiritualism, they're going to say, man, we really need to make an image to the beast. This is how the whole world will follow after the beast. This is how the king of the north will think he's going to win. But when you get to Daniel chapter 12, it says Michael stands up. Michael stands up for his people. Just about when the Sunday law is going to pass, when there's going to be persecution, when there's going to be the death penalty, when all these horrible things, this great time of trouble, then Michael will stand up and deliver his people. Young people, I know I went a little long. Don't You can invite me back. But I was like, you know what? Let me highlight the whole book. But I went a little long. But please forgive me. But I hope you guys were blessed. Seriously. Like, God is going to win. Jesus is going to win. Michael is going to win. God is looking for young people who will be able to stand in this time of trouble. And we can only stand if we have that experience of Jacob. Somebody mentioned Jacob earlier with that wrestling with God, that uniting with God that says, you know what, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Cover me with your righteousness. Help me to be able to stand during this great tribulation, Lord. And God is looking for young people like you and me to study the books of Daniel, to encourage others to read Daniel and Revelation, that these books are not hard to understand. I mean, listen, I'm a simple New Yorker who doesn't have a theology degree, who studied for myself. And I hopefully I think everybody it made some type of sense to you, the book of Daniel in the flow that we just kind of going over it chapter by chapter. You guys can do it, too. You don't have like. I'm telling you, uh, and I, with all, you know, I'm not even saying this in even in a bad way, but who's the next Doug Bachelor? I mean, come on, guys. 
Who's the next Mark Finley? Who are the who who is the next young person to take the torch and say, man, I'm gonna create a podcast about Daniel Revelation. I'm gonna put content out, Seven Day Adventist content out. I'm gonna tell people about God's word. I'm gonna be passionate about Daniel Revelation. It's not hard. If I can get a degree, a four-year degree. Listen, guys, if you can get a four-year degree, a master's degree, a doctor degree, and say that studying Daniel is hard, we got to get our priorities straight. So, young people, all, let me see where we're at, 21 of you, because I know like six people left. Is it your desire to study Daniel and to know the books of Daniel and Revelation? It's my desire. To know it better, it's my desire as well, and I hope it's yours. Um, I want to pray for you guys that these books will be an encouragement, a light to your life. Uh, they'll give you purpose and meaning. And that 1844 and what we believe as, as Adventists is biblical. You can listen to podcasts. You can listen to Adventists who have left the faith and this and that. And they may say all these things, but God's word is true. And I just want to, and I pray that God blesses you and blesses everybody on the chat, all 21 of you. As we continue to try to stay faithful, as Daniel did in these last days. And uh, God bless you guys. And I want to end with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, be with um, all those who are on this live. Father, thank you so much for the books of Daniel and Revelation. Thank you that we know that you will deliver us, Lord. And that you win the battle, Lord. That you are a conqueror. That you are an overcomer. And because you are an overcomer, we can be the same as well. We can overcome as Daniel did. We can stand in our place as Daniel did. We can stand faithful to you amidst the fire and the flames. Lord, bless each young person, bless each adult, bless those who will listen to this, Lord, um, and help us. Give us a hunger and a desire to study prophecy, to study the books of Daniel and Revelation. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Lead us and guide us into all truth. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Young people, God bless. I don't know how this is going to end. I don't know if our host left because uh, I went too long, but um, I pray God is ble God blesses you all and that you can encourage other young people to study Daniel and Revelation. And so I will leave it to the host or whoever's taking over. Jack, I think Jack's the one I'm, who's going to close yeah. us. Thank you, Jack. Thank you guys for inviting me once again. Hopefully we can do this again soon. No problem, Rick. We'll probably have you again when we have available dates, which will probably be sometime in 2024. Good. Actually, I think I'm coming out for, I think I'm in October, actually, because I saw it. Uh, okay. <laughs> I think I'm in like October 20th or something. Um, so you guys will see me again. We'll go over Revelation, but it won't be as long. Um, but I can't wait till that time, guys. God bless you all. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. I know So I went a little long, so we may not have time for questions. Unless you guys want to ask questions, it's, I, I'm I'm game, but you guys let me know. I, th I think we have a little time left. We usually go till 9. But um, while they are thinking of their questions, I'm going to go ahead and share our closing music.
that was Abide With Me. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was by Noah Logan. Correct me if I'm wrong. But um, we do have one question in the chat. Yes. Um, uh, I think I um, Claire asked, do you have any tips for good resources? Study Daniel and Revelation privately. I do. Um, so check these. Um, in my when I started, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. And I definitely tapped into Audioverse. Everybody know about Audioverse. Um, there's a there is a I prefer. I don't know if any of if anybody has heard of, of Dr. Norman McNulty. He really teaches Daniel Revelation really good. I got both his books. So I got Daniel Revelation. Uh, sorry, fading in. There we go. And Daniel. Sorry, I don't know why it's not. Maybe it's too far away. I don't know. He has a book, Daniel Revelation, called Daniel Practical Living in the Judgment Hour and Revelation Practical Living in the Judgment Hour. They're on uh, Remnant Publications. And you, I, I literally listen to like, all his Daniel Revelation sermons because for some reason he connects with me as a te I connect with him as a teacher and I really just process how he teaches well. So, but um, you know, Norman McNulty is like my, my number one source uh, of prophecy stuff in, in our church. So audio verse, these two books um, you can, there's, I think there's two Ellen White books on the commentary of Daniel Revelation. You can get, we have Daniel Revelation by Uriah Smith. These are all kind of known Adventist historical sources. Um, but, you know, read the read the chapters like uh, like we just did tonight. Like go a chapter a day. That's a key, guys. So um, every day, one chapter. That's it. You don't got the Bible doesn't have to be so crazy where it's like I got to spend three hours in the word. Like one chapter, guys. One chapter, Daniel one see like oh check it like you're doing a research paper yo this is how you should think if i got paid to write a summary of the book of daniel chapter one if you gotta would get a grade for it if you would get money for it how would you operate how would you be thinking you would want to dissect everything yo what everything about judah i want to know everything about judah i want to know who jehoiakim is i want to know what nebuchadnezzar like why are you named that name i want to understand everything about the historical context and it really is research and you got to make some time and to really study just as you do anything so if you want to be successful in school you got to put the work in you want to be a successful athlete you got to put the work in everything you but with our work it's not us it's Jesus, fill me with your spirit so that I can want to do it. Because we don't want to do it. we rather scroll. we rather work. we rather chill. we rather do things that please ourselves. So we got to ask God to help us even to study. So that's the first key. Like, God, help me to want to giving a hunger and thirsting after your word. Because honestly, we don't. And when you're real with God, he accepts that. He's like, thank you for being real. But let's get to work, man. Like, yes, it's a struggle, but I'll help you. And so start with the Holy Spirit, reading a chapter a day, then you bring in the commentary. And um, yeah, that's what I would suggest for some resources. Any other questions? I'm sorry, guys, it's so late, man. I, I, I went a little bit. I think I bit off too much more I can chew. But I, I hope that I inspire one young person to continue to like really get hyped about Daniel Revelation. That was my goal. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you, Claire. Clara. I don't see any questions on my end. Um, okay. I don't see any on your end. I get, I think we can That's it. and close out with prayer. Awesome. Thank you, Clara. And thank you again, Jack, and all the, the, the leadership at Granite Bay. It's been a while. Um, and when I saw Daniel, I was like, man, I got to, I got to give a summary. I got to give a whole summary, but it went a little long, but by God's grace, everyone's inspired and encouraged. Uh, so let's pray. Father in heaven, again, we just want to ask for your spirit, Lord, to give us this hunger and thirsting after righteousness, after your word, Lord. Um, Father, illuminate our minds, Lord. Help us to, as Daniel did, to um, purpose in our hearts 
to not defile our temples, Lord, if we're eating something or habits that are wrong, going to bed late or doing something that's stopping us from understanding your word, give us the strength and the power to break it, Lord. Um, we want to study more. We want to be people of the book. We want to be a, a young, young people who know the word and who know God. Father, most of all, change our hearts. Help us to be born again and um, save us in your kingdom and help us to be a light in this world. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you, guys. Yep. Thank you so much yep. for joining. Thank you, Victor, for giving us that message. Praise the Lord. See you Thank all you, later. Yep. God bless, guys. Have a good night and have, have a happy Sabbath.